Jay of Stratford Paddock, this is the Paper Talk. As you can see, we're in the studio, so do get involved in the comments and the chat. And don't forget as well to give us a like. We'll be getting through all the latest Manchester United news, including the transfer window activity, or lack of it really. A bit underwhelming, on it, if we're being brutally honest. Uh, the transfer window, not a lot going on there, so I'll get to that in a minute. And also talking about Ed Woodward has finally departed Manchester United. The executive vice chairman has gone. Is that going to change anything? Are we going to now be, you know completely savvy in the transfer market and have a great structure at the club and do all the things that we should have been doing since, well, since well before, or well, at least since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. I'm not so sure. Get involved in the chat anyway and let us know what you think about that. Right, transfer deadline day. It was kind of expected, wasn't it, that Manchester United wouldn't do a lot of business on transfer deadline day. There was a couple of stories doing the round that perhaps we would be in for Usman Dembele or maybe even Ease Basuma, but it seemed a little bit like paper talk, literally. Not much substance to it at all. A few stories doing the rounds, there was nothing concrete, and in the end, we didn't make any signings, did we? There were a couple of... Um, other stories doing the rounds, though, about outgoings, one of which obviously happened. That was Donny van der Beek going to Everton. He's joining Frank Lampard's uh, Toffee Revolution. So he's gone there till the end of the season. It doesn't, I think there's not an option to buy there, so he's just alone to the end of the season. Be good for him. Go there. Get some game time, which is obviously what he's been crying out for since he's come to the Premier League. And hopefully show us what he's made of, because... I know I might be in a minority. I still think the jury's out a little bit on Donny van der Beek. I don't think, you know, you can argue that he's not had the opportunities or whatever the reasons are, but we haven't really seen enough of him to, to know whether he can do it week in, week out in the Premier League. Now he's got the opportunity to show us whether he can or not. Go to Everton, play in the Premier League every week, hopefully do really well, and then come back to Old Trafford. We'll wait and see what happens with that, though. But it's a good move for him. Makes a lot of sense because he's just not getting the games, is he? He's barely had a, a kick this season. He's played a few games, not many. Last season was the same. He needs game time and hopefully he'll get it under Frank Lampard. So that move makes a lot of sense. There was a couple of moves that would have made sense, but didn't happen. One move was Phil Jones to Bordeaux. Now, we spoke about this on the Transfers Live last night. At one point, it looked like this was on. Bordeaux were interested in Phil Jones on a six-month loan deal, I think it was. He was talking to them. It looked like it could have happened. I think the problem was around game time, the lack of guarantee around playing time. He didn't want to go there to sit on the bench. There was no guarantee he was going to start. So the move fell through, which is a little bit disappointing, I think. I think Phil Jones needs football matches, doesn't he? He's barely played. He's played one game in two years, I think it is. So he needs football matches. He would have, I think, well, regardless of whether he'd have started every week, I think he would have got more games for Bordeaux than he's getting at Manchester United. The only reason he played against Wolves a few weeks ago was because we had a bit of an injury crisis. We were missing, like, basically three centre-backs, and that's why he got in. And Ralph Ragnick even said that before the game. He said he more or less didn't have a choice. So he had to pick uh, Phil Jones, and Phil Jones did well, to be fair. But how many more games is he likely to get? Not many, in my opinion. Opinion. So a little bit surprising he hasn't gone there. Maybe he just thought, what's the point going to Bordeaux and sitting on the bench? I'm, I'm no better off than I am. I'm probably worse off being on Bordeaux's bench than at Manchester United. But you would have thought you'd had a good chance of getting into that team. Anyway, that move didn't happen. There was also another move that looked like it could happen later on, but just didn't. And this was Dean Henderson to Watford. Uh, Watford apparently were interested in taking Dean Henderson on loan at the end of the season. He was up for going because he's not getting many games this season due to David De Gea's form. But because it was so... 11th hour, the club were reluctant to let that happen because they wouldn't be able to bring anyone in and it would have left us short of goalkeepers. So Dean Henderson is basically staying put. I mean, I feel for Dean Henderson a little bit because you do feel like he was pretty much first choice under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I know Ole said this thing about I've got two number ones, but towards the end of last season, you got the impression that Dean Henderson was the first choice in the Premier League and David De Gea was getting more of the cup games, obviously the Europa League final. Dean Henderson gets covid and just doesn't get back into the team. David De Gea re regains his form, has been almost as good as he's ever been for Manchester United this season. I still think there's a few question marks around his, his command of his area and his distribution, but in terms of his shot stopping, he's been he's been elite. Dean Henderson can't get back into the team, and now he's left in a bit of limbo. I just think he needs to be patient, I really do. He's only young, is he 24, 25? So he's got, in goalkeeper's terms, that's you're an infant. So I still think he's going to get an opportunity. He just needs to maybe bide his time. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that one. Another story doing the rounds, or two incoming stories that were doing the rounds, was the Usman Dembele one. United, like, going to go for him. And also, Yves Bissouma. Now, the Yves Bissouma one felt a bit like 
the player himself maybe wanted that to happen. A few fans maybe looked at it and thought, okay, we need a defensive midfielder. He's having a good season. He would be any sort of the journalists that are usually on the ball with, with Manchester United transfers that made me think, okay, this is going to happen. No real fire to that smoke. It looked very unlikely that was that was ever going to be a, a deal that Manchester United were going to make, and it didn't. Um, we'll get into some of the comments as well. Let us know what you think about the Donny van der Beek transfer, about the fact that Manchester United didn't bring anyone in. Are you disappointed by that? A lot of people are. Let us know what your thoughts on that. Does that affect our chances of getting top four? Do you think we've still got enough quality to, to maintain a top four place? Do you think we've got enough quality to challenge in the Champions League and FA Cup? People laugh, you go, challenging the Champions League. What are we in it for? Just to make up numbers. Do we have a chance in that competition? Let us know what you think. Uh, Rebecca J. Sullivan says, morning, Jay. Ross Murphy, morning, Jay. Morning. Uh, Black Hero 10 says, morning. Uh, family. Um, Mike Fisher says, everyone from evening from the Philippines, sorry, Jay. No surprise we didn't buy anyone. January isn't the best time to get the player the club really wants. Yeah, January is a bit of a mixed bag in it. We've had some good January signings. Bruno Fernandez, of course. You go back way back to 2006, Vidic and Evra, two absolute legends. But those are the exceptions rather than the rule. You look at other signings we've done in January, they've been a little bit underwhelming. You look at Alexis Sanchez, for example, Odina Gallo, he was okay for a bit, wasn't he? But the January transfer window is usually, I won't say panic buy, but usually it's where things are going a bit wrong and you go, okay, is someone available who can offer me a, a co cover in that position? I don't feel like United felt there was players of the calibre we need. We were speaking the other day to um, Guido Schaefer from over in Germany, and he was talking about Amadou Hadara. Now, Hadara had been linked with us. And Guido Schaefer is a journalist, he's an ex-footballer, he used to play in the same team as Jurgen Klopp. He's now a journalist, he covers RB Leipzig. And I asked him about Amadou Hadara, who'd been linked with us in January. And I said, do you think he's good enough for Manchester United? And he just said, no. He said, no, he's not. And this is the problem you get, is that you're sometimes so desperate for a signing, you might buy a player who just comes in and sits on the bench, and that's not, not any use to us. So I'm a frustrated, I'm a bit frustrated we didn't get anyone. I think we have left ourselves a little, little bit risky in terms of top four and challenging for trophies this season. But I'll accept it if we go big in the summer, if we bring in a, a midfielder that we need in the summer. That is the big question. Are we going to go and get someone like a Declan Rice or a Jude Bellingham in the summer? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. The, the, the noises are that that's what's going to happen, that United are focused on main targets in the summer and that we're willing to splash the cash. But we'll have to wait and see. We don't even know who the manager's going to be yet, so we'll have to wait and see what happens on that front. Uh, Rebecca Gormley, who's been a member of the academy for two months, says, I'm happy for Donny going on loan, but this window has been a big disappointment and we will struggle to get top four. Difficult, mm, I, I kind of get that. I just, I feel like we should be able to get top four, but it's ropey, in it, to say the least. Uh, Anon says, Jay, I dreamt yesterday we were in the final with Man City and we absolutely smashed them 3-0. Okay. Well, whatever final is, that's the FA Cup or the, the Champions League final, I'll take it. Um, <laughs> John, John Gallagher says, have you had your avocado this morning, Jay? Have uh, have us a good laugh last night. Yeah, I was getting names all wrong last night. I think I ran out of steam towards the end of the uh, the live stream there. So apologies if I butchered your name even more than I normally do. Uh, but yeah, it was a bit of a underwhelming transfer window. We were live last night and we did it a, a, a couple of summers ago where it was all happening on deadline day. We bought in the likes of Cavani, bought in the likes of Facundo Palestri and Amad Diallo. All those deals sort of more or less got done on deadline day. Wasn't the case yesterday. The only deal that got done yesterday was Donny van der Beek. We've also had a few other players go out on loan, haven't we? Amad Diallo, of course, went to Rangers and one or two of the other youngsters are already out on loan. So it's not been the transfer window that many of us uh, were hoping for. Um, a little bit of an update on the Mason Greenwood situation. I have to be careful about what I say here because obviously there's a, a criminal case going on, but I will just give you a little update on, on what we know. Um, there was a statement yesterday about the Texas being granted additional time. Greater Manchester Police gave a statement out. And one of the things that they said in his statements was, we remind people to avoid any commentary or sharing of images that could compromise the victim's right to lifelong anonymity or risk prejudice, a live investigation with active proceedings. So we have to be careful because we don't want prejudice, a live investigation. That's obviously ongoing. Um, so <laughs> any updates, any statements we get from that, we will keep you updated. But that's where the sort of current situation is at the minute. Obviously, you know, there's, there's, that was an update from yesterday, so we'll know if there's any sort of questioning time or anything that gets extended, whatever it is. As soon as there's a statement by the official channels, then we can, you know, we can keep you guys updated. 
as and when that comes in. Um, moving on to Ed Woodward. Ed Woodward um, has finally left Manchester United. The executive vice chairman, which is what he calls himself, left yesterday or the today. I think it was his last day yesterday. So that's it. He's gone. Yeah. There he is. Ed Woodward. The melt. Um, yeah. I think most people are um, probably happy that Edward was gone. I know I am. I don't think his time at United has been a success. He was one of the architects of the Glazer deal, and you probably know my thoughts on, on that. And his time at the club, when he took over from David Gill, he made all these promises. We can do things in the transfer window other clubs can only join us, uh, can only dream of. And what have we done? We've, our transfer policy has been pretty shambolic. We've backed managers for a bit. They're not backed to him. There's not been any proper structure at the club. There's not been any coherent strategy. It just seems we go from one manager, one philosophy, I hate that word, but I'll use it, to another big signings coming in and a lack of signings, strengthening areas we don't need to strengthen in, not strengthening areas we do, taking massive gambles on certain players, overpaying on other players. It's been a mess and he has to take some responsibility for that. So... We, I think Richard Arnold's taking over for him. We'll see what happens with Richard Arnold. I don't know a lot about him. I think he comes from a finance background. Is he going to be someone who can do the things that Ed Woodward should have done? I'll at least give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's see what happens. I'm a little bit sceptical. I do think that Richard Arnold is more willing to have a bit of a better dialogue with fans as well, which may be a step in the right direction. Ed Woodward was pretty aloof. He promised us he'd speak to us, I think it was eight eight years ago. I think Macken bumped into him and tried to say, you know, you're going to chance was and he said he would. Never did. Never happened. I think Steve cornered him as well at some do and said the same thing. Just didn't happen. And his tenure will be one that was just unsuccessful. If you look at what happened before Edward took over in terms of trophies and success and then look what happened afterwards. Yes, I understand that Sir Alex Ferguson left, so that is massive. Obviously, the greatest manager ever leaving has an effect. But that doesn't justify the lack of success we've had with the amount of money we've spent and the amount of managers we've gone through. Some of the managers we've had as well, these are managers that were synonymous with winning trophies. And yes, we won some, a couple of trophies under Jose and we won the FA Cup under Louis van Gaal. But we've flattered to deceive far too often. We've wasted far too much money. We haven't had a proper strategy in place. We've had an executive vice chairman who's made silly statements, who's seen more concern with filling the coffers of the Glazers than he does with delivering trophies for the football club. And I'm glad to see the back of him, basically. Get involved in the chat. Let us know what you think. Um, do you think that... Are you bothered about Edward would go in? Do you think that's going to change anything? Do you think that it's a positive thing? Or do you think that it's almost irrelevant? Let us know. Um, your thoughts on the matter. Uh, George Taylor says, Andy Cole joined us in the January transfer window. Forgive me. Andy Cole, one of the all-time great United players. Um, how could I have forgotten that? Heaven Souls says, spot on, Jay. Yeah, I think there's quite a few people just glad to see the back of Ed Woodward. And I don't blame them, to be honest with you. Not exactly a, a, a person who's, who's, you know, impressed at Manchester United and when you look at Ed Woodward and what's going on you just I just I just think of failure and underachieving basically I think that's what um that's what he's going to be remembered for but who knows history may judge him kinder but I certainly won't um Anon says Jay I think Medjbury is going to shine I'm looking forward to seeing Hannibal Medjbury I think he's a player who's got an immense amount of talent he's a little bit choose my words carefully yeah. quirky shall we say yeah very uh, individual. He, he has this tendency to get himself into some silly situations with bookings and sending offs. We saw him for the under-23s last season. We did a bit of a watch-along on Switch, and he, he scored a great goal. Then he gets a yellow card. Then he gets a second yellow for throw it, for waving an imaginary card and calling the player over to get the card, which is a new one on me. But I do sympathise with him a bit because he does get kicked from pillar to post, so you can understand why he gets a bit frustrated with that. But a very, very talented young lad. Looks like he's going to... Not, I don't know if he's going to get many games under Ralph Ragnick, but he's at least, I think he's training with the first team as well. Ralph Ragnick's mentioned him. So who knows? We'll see what happens with Hannibal Medry, but I'm looking forward to seeing him feature for the first team, whether that's this season or next season. I think the kid's an immense talent and the type of player that gets your fans excited, got something about him, can create that bit of magic, can score goals, can go past players. He's got a bit of toughness to him as well. It could be, it could be a very popular figure at Manchester United Football Club. I'm going to leave it there. Thanks everyone who got involved in the chat in the comments. Don't forget as well to hit the subscribe button. Let's subscribe to the channel. Let's get 700,000 subscribers by the end of the season. With your support, we've had some fantastic support from you guys. We can do it. I've been Jay Motte. This has been The Paper Talk. Thanks for watching.